advice for young people, particularly because Generation Rise is geared towards teens and young adults. So, mm -hmm. any particular advice for young people in today's culture? Totally. Yeah, I would just say, like, when I look at, when I see the way people are struggling, like, that I come in my own life and that I come encounter with other people most of all, it, at the end of the day, the answer is almost always the same, like, as far as, like, how do, how do I find my path and how do I get back on track? And it's always that same thing I was mentioning earlier about staying connected, like, spiritually connected with God. And, you know, there's a verse that says, you know, I'm the vine and you're the branches. He who stays, you know, within me can do much, but without, apart from me, you can do nothing. And that's absolutely true. I've seen it time and time and again in my own life. And when I come to my huge dead ends, I realize that I haven't been spiritually connecting with God. I've just been kind of going through the motions. And that's when I have to stop. I have to kind of fast. I have to fast all the distractions and um, have a portion of every day where I'm only not doing anything else but getting connected with the presence of God. And so my biggest, I mean, the biggest victory in my life is when I learned how to pray. And I learned how to listen and spend time with God and, you know, kind of slow myself down, slow my brainwaves down so I wasn't so distracted. And then when I finally learned how to do that and worship um, in truth and, and just be in the moment with God and listen and not just talk and ask for things all the time, when I really started connecting with Him, it transformed my life and it brought so much more supernatural power into my life and into my prayer and helped me to really, I mean, start to truly have a relationship with God. So if I had any encouragement, it would just be to seek seek first God and seek that spiritual connection, um, coming to know Him and spending time with Him just like you would any other person. And that's really what's going to give your life the power, the direction, the strength that you need to get through anything. Okay, so based off what you're saying, I know a lot of the time it can be tempting for us to just talk and talk and talk and not really listen. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of young people probably have a hard time actually hearing from God. So yeah. what would you say is the key to actually hearing God's voice? Yeah, totally. Well, I think the key is um, eliminating distractions. And um, literally, I had to, like I said, learning how to pray. Like, there, um, like the practical application is, like, your brain waves go a certain speed all day long. They slow down right before bed, and they slow down right when you first wake up in the morning. And if you notice in the Bible, Jesus was always going off while it was still dark, you know, by himself to pray early in the morning or late at night. And I think that there's a parallel there. I read a book about where, um, a pastor who was studying the, like, studying how Jesus prayed, trying to learn how we should pray kind of thing. And, um, and he said that, you know, you need to pray either when you first wake up or right before you go to bed, or you need to find a way to slow yourself down. And so what he did was he started using, like, they talked about meditating on the Word of God, you know? Mm -hmm. Really use some meditative practices where you slow your breathing, use your counting breathing exercises, and then I listen to praise and worship music, mm -hmm. and then, you know, then I close my eyes, and, and I, since we know that God is everywhere, you know, I just, in my eyes, I say, okay, I'm going to set Christ before me, just like the Bible says, here's Jesus, he's with me, you know? And I believe that I'm worthy because He made me worthy. I believe that He loves me unconditionally because of the sacrifice that He made, not because I'm good enough. And when I set aside all the things that I'm holding on to that make me feel like God would never want to talk to me, when I put, you know, the body, the body and mind of Christ over myself, new spirit, new heart, and I truly believe that, then I can sit there and I'm with Jesus. And if He has something to say to me, He can say it and I can hear Him because I believe what his word is said to be true. But you have to train yourself because we have so many negative voices inside our minds. So first of all, you gotta slow your brain waves down with the breathing and the listening to praise and worship music. And then you have to, um, you have to line your mind up with all the truths of God's word. And then when you see yourself as a new creation that Jesus has made you that way, suddenly you have his righteousness, you have love, you know, you have peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, all these things because he gave them to you, not because you earned them. And suddenly it sets you free to realize that God does want to talk to you. And he does want you to be able to hear him. And then you can. You can talk to him. And he's amazing. And it's just like spending time with any other friend. If you think you know someone, but you never spend any time with them, you don't really know them. And it's the same thing with God. If you think you know God, but you don't spend any time with him, and if you have a friend who only ever comes to you when they need something, or if you have a friend who only ever talks and talks and talks and talks and talks and never gives you a chance to say anything, they don't really know you either. So the key part is really just getting connected with God. 
and life is hard. It's always hard because we live in a fallen world. We're not in heaven. There's always going to be something missing until we get there. So maybe you feel like there's a hole inside me and some, everything's not okay. Maybe I'm not a good enough Christian. I'm not good enough. The truth is you're not going to ever feel okay until you get to heaven, and that's okay because that, that's that hole, the God-shaped hole, you know, that won't be filled until we get there. And we can spend time and get close to him as we can, but there always will be that longing for that time to be with him, just like we're supposed to be in the garden. And if you can let that be okay and let yourself be okay with that, and just really just points to the beautiful love that we have with him. It's just like, you know, if a husband and wife love each other and one of them leaves for a time, that one misses it. If, if they didn't miss them, then that's a sign that there's a problem. <laughs> so <laughs> we have that missing because it's that wonderful and that loving longing to be with him all the time. And then if we can accept ourselves for who Jesus has made us to be and how God sees us, then we can tap in and really become connected with God and your whole life is transformed. You said that as a worship leader, what would you say is worship means to you and what kind of the secret to connecting with God during worship? Gotcha. Um, for me, worship is a really powerful time because you know we're talking all day, we're hearing other stuff coming in all the time. A lot of times we have negative voices in our heads or other people are doing, saying negative mm -hmm. things, turn on the TV or look at a magazine or whatever, and there's all these messages. Most of them are geared towards getting you to buy something. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them aren't based on the truth, you know, but when we worship, what we're thinking about, what we're speaking, what we're doing is all lined up with the truth that God is good, you know, mm -hmm. and worthy of our praise. And so that's such a powerful moment because for our lives, whenever we're walking in the truth, we are we're free and mm -hmm. we're we're living to the fullest of our potential. Mm -hmm. And whenever we're dealing with a lie or living according to something that's not according to the truth, mm -hmm. it's like we're swimming against the current and it's dragging us down, slowing us down. So worship is just a really awesome thing because I think there's so much freedom in the truth. The Bible promises us that the truth will set us free. So I think worship, we're connecting with God spiritually and um, well, first of all, we're worshiping because he, he deserves it, no matter how we feel. But also, when you get spiritually connected with God, he's lifting weights off of your shoulders. He's reminding you of what the truth is, which is, hey, this is not such a big deal. Mm -hmm. You don't have to figure it all out. I'm on your side. I'm working for you. Those are really great things mm -hmm. to take the weight off of you and make you free. And um, so to me, the, 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 the secret dream for connecting spiritually with God, like I said, the more you're connecting with God spiritually you know, throughout the day, the more that you're setting it before you, you know, that's what I have to do, especially like leading up on stage, which mm -hmm. I use the word leading kind of loosely because only Jesus, only Holy Spirit can lead people to the cross. Mm -hmm. I hear people saying stuff like that all the time. I'm like, well, oh, God bless your heart, but I don't think that's true. Yeah. The truth is, I'm just out there facilitating. I'm providing, you know, I'm helping to provide an opportunity. That's it. So when I'm facilitating, you know, it can be easy to be distracted because you got all these people in front of you, and some of them are like this. Like, oh, yeah. I'm not facilitating at all. So I literally, I have to go back to where what I learned through my my prayer and meditations and stuff like that is like, okay, Jesus is here. Here, he's here with me. I'm just gonna look at him in my mind, and I can see him. You know, mm -hmm. he's victorious, and I just sing to him, and that's how how I can worship. And that is, you know, and some. I say you win some, you lose some, you know, we're only human, mm -hmm. you know. But the truth is, whether you're feeling super into it or not, God is always good. Mm -hmm. He's always worthy of worship and praise. So, I mean, if you're worshiping God, you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Whether you're super, got the touchy feels about it right then or not, you know, because you're lining yourself up with the truth, mm -hmm. which is most important.